presenter today, and I just wanted to mention a couple items before we begin. Um, you'll have noticed your line has been placed on mute. However, if you come up with any questions, please feel free to uh, post that in the question box um, on the on the uh, go to webinar pane, and I'll try and get to those questions as we're going through. Um, and if I can't answer them or can't get to them before the end, I'll uh, pass them off to Scott when we're finished. So I will give it over to Scott and we can begin. Hold on one Thanks, second. Thanks, Brianna. Yep. Okay. You should have the controls now. Okay. Perfect. Okay. You can see my Gmail okay? We can. Yep. Okay. Thanks, as Brianna said, thanks everybody for joining us. This is the second in our series of three Knowledge Sync uh, kind of lunch and learn demos. It'll be 15 or 20 minutes or so, so I'll try to make this as quick as we can. In the first demonstration, we showed you the ability for uh, uh, Knowledge Sync to send email alerts based on triggering data conditions in your sales logic system. Today, we're going to show you kind of the flip side of that. We're going to show you how Knowledge Sync can take an incoming email and create a data entity from that. And the first thing I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to have to create a couple of emails here because while the demo is going on here, we need to give Knowledge Sync time to kind of do its thing and process these. So you are going to get to see this hopefully in real time. So the first thing I'm going to do is send an email to myself because my inbox is set up to be processed. And I'm going to create an activity. And I'm going to say, here is a new activity for our demo. And I'm just going to send that. So what's going to happen is Knowledge Sync is actually looking for this word in the subject line. We've pre-programmed it to say, if you get an email from anybody that has that word or a word like activity in the subject line, that's the trigger. That's what's triggering Knowledge Sync to then take this email and create a scheduled activity for the account manager for CFX Demo Scott Weber. So I've got an account manager named Lee Hogan. He's a sales logics user. He's the account manager, so I'm pretending to send an email to Lee here so that you'll see what's going to happen. So we'll go ahead and send this one. Then I'm going to do one more that's going to create a support ticket, sending it to the same email address. This time I'm looking for the word support, and I'm just going to say support request. And we're going to say here is the new ticket from the demo. OK, so I'm going to let those go. And you'll see in my inbox that there's the two emails we just sent. So again, while we're talking about Knowledge Sync, it's going to be grabbing these emails, making a decision, should I be doing something about these or not? And then what should I do once I get them? And that's what I'll kind of explain as we go through this. And if all goes well, the end result is we're going to have a brand new support ticket in my sales logic system, and we're going to have a new scheduled activity uh, for me to follow up with this contact or lead. So the way this is working is I've opened up the Knowledge Sync Event Manager, and you'll notice that in the panel on the left, we have the email response opened up. And right now I have three different events or queries activated in the system. And one of them is the query that's going to create the new activity. And the second one here is going to create the new support ticket. So these queries are based on uh, scripts that are written. And Knowledge Sync comes with all the scripts to do exactly what I'm showing you today. So I'm showing you it pretty much out of the box. Uh, and based on these scripts, that's what's telling it what to do about these inbound emails that it's receiving. Now, it's coming into my regular inbox, and so if I do happen to get an email that doesn't say support, doesn't say activity, 
it's just going to ignore it because we have filters built into these queries that say only process those emails that have this particular word in it, activity in this case, or support in the, in, in the case of the other one. So we can also tell it to leave the email in my inbox or delete it. So in other words, if I'm using Outlook, for example, as my email, I may never even see the actual email from my client, but rather I'm just going to see the scheduled activity that it created from that email if you prefer. So there's a lot of adjustability in exactly how it behaves here, and I'm just trying to keep it simple for today uh, so you can kind of get a sense about how this, this whole thing works. And uh, then down below, these are the actual queries that are running, uh, and the queries are, we've got it set up so that not only does the new activity in the ticket get created, but we're also sending a response email, which is what we showed you in, in the last demo, we're going to show you that an email is going to be generated. In fact, that's already happening. If you look in my inbox, you will notice that the email that I created that says support request, here's your new ticket for, our, for the demo, has already created an outbound email sending back to the customer to say, we got your ticket request. We've got it. Rest assured. It's in the system, and we're going to be responding to it. And now you saw, here comes the one that says uh, uh, you have a new activity request. That email is going to the account manager who has the new scheduled activity. So they're going to get an email alert that this has happened and that they need to go into their sales logics and make the phone call, go on the meeting, or whatever the activity was for. And so this is the beginning of the process. So we sent the emails. The alerts that are tied to the response have already been sent out. OK, so let's jump back into uh, the event manager here and take a look at this again. So we've got the two queries set up that are actually running and alive. And we've got the emails uh, alerting going out. And I did create just a brief little slide here that gives you a little bit more background about what this is doing. First of all, the Knowledge Sync email responder is one of the three modules, we'll show you the third one next month, called Webcaster. And some of the things it can do with an inbound email, create new support tickets, you'll see that today, create new activities. We can also create new leads, new opportunities, new quotes, quite literally any any piece of data that you want, any you know new entity in sales logics, can be created from one of these email responder queries. And so I just threw out a few kind of examples that we know about. Probably the most popular one would be leads. So if you've got a website where you're having the prospect fill out a form, what's your name, what's your address, what are you interested in, and then they submit that, and somebody at your company is getting an email, we can take that email and parse it out and actually create a brand new lead. And it does more than just create the lead because we can also build some intelligence into this particular event that says the first line in the email is their name. The second line is what they're interested in. The third line is, you know, when are they ready to buy? So we can process what I would call a formatted email, an email that's coming from your website with a specific format and specific anchor fields in it so that we're pre-filling the right fields within sales logics for the particular form we're creating. Same thing for opportunities and quotes. We can pre-fill data. Now, my demo isn't that fancy today, but I just wanted to make you aware that that can happen. Also, um, the email responder feature is only included with the enterprise edition of Knowledge Sync. There are three different versions of Knowledge Sync. And you, you do have to have the Enterprise Edition. It's $39.95 uh, plus annual maintenance. It's a one-time charge for Enterprise. And you're going to get the email alerting feature, this email responder feature, and the webcaster feature all as part of that particular package. Um, <clears throat> and we also mentioned, and, and I showed you, that I got an email uh, response that said, OK, a new ticket's been created. Uh, or a new activity has been created. So that's part of the notification feature that's tied into the little demo. You can also, if you wanted to kick the tires on Knowledge Sync, there is a 45-day 
uh, trial license. So if you do decide, hey, we, we want to take a closer look at this with our own system, you can go ahead and install it. It's got a 45-day uh, fully functioning license. It's not a handicap system. It's just got a time bomb for the license. And at any time, you can convert that to a live license if you want to keep going with the product. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show there. So let's take a look. And I'm going to now look at the monitor and see if I have any pending events. It looks like everything is working. I'm kind of cheating here, and I'm, I'm looking under the hood to see if Knowledge Sync is actually doing its thing. It usually takes about five minutes or so for this to happen. So let's jump into Sales Logics now, and I'm just going to refresh this and see if we get this. Almost there. Okay, so now you can see down here at the bottom of uh, John Abbott's activity tab that here at 210 today, it created a brand new activity. And if I open up that activity, you can see that here's the new activity from the email and here's the new activity from our demo. So you're seeing it happen brand new activity. We can do things like set up an alarm if we want to so that when John logs in, or rather Lee logs in, he'll see this alarmed activity uh, for, uh, for him that was scheduled by Knowledge Sync. So we pre-filled as much as we could from that particular email. So there's the activity. And now here is the new ticket. So I'm going to open up this ticket. And here we see that John Abbott has a new support ticket. And it's got the subject from the body of the email. Here's the new ticket from the demo. And it's in process and ready to be worked on by uh, the support staff. So that's, that's basically what I wanted to show you today. Again, I'm keeping it simple. It could be considerably more elaborate if your needs are a little more, uh, a little more sophisticated than what I showed you today. Uh, so with that, Brianna, do we have any questions that anybody's asking? Yeah, I do have some questions. Um, okay. I'll just start at the top and work my way down here. The sure. first one that came in was um, wondering if you can use Knowledge Sync, the email responder, to also create new contacts and companies. Yes, absolutely. I didn't put that on my little list. But yeah, it can be used for any, any data entity, uh, literally uh, could be uh, created net new. So at the answer to that is yes. And this is kind of a two-parter coming from the same person is okay. if they have certain required fields when creating a contact, could that be enforced um, using Knowledge Sync? Well, I, I suppose, means, you know, have to have like a phone number and email address or, you know, obviously you'd have that, but. Yeah, Knowledge Sync can't really enforce that. That data would have to be present on the email itself that it's creating the contact from. Now, if that email that we're describing here was the result of the prospect filling out a form on your website, as long as you're requiring that field on your website form, then it would absolutely be in the email and then would pre-populate uh, the, the new contact form in sales logic. So now it can't do that in and of itself. That data has to be in the email to begin with. Okay. Um, let me see. Uh, I think you answered this, but we can just go over it again. Is sure. the email response query and event available out of the box? Yes. Everything I showed you today is actually out of the box. So all of the, you know, the scripting and the code uh, that I presented today uh, is definitely in there and uh, modifiable. But if you don't want to modify it, you like it just the way it is, all of those scripts are included with it that I showed you, including creating new lead. OK. Um, and then I have a question about what versions of SalesLogix this is or Knowledge Sync is compatible with. It's actually compatible with all versions, quite literally. It's been around, gosh, as long as I've been at Customer Effects, and I'm thinking that's version 4 back when I started. 
So Knowledge Sync has versions that are compatible with SalesLogix version, at least going all the way back to version four. So you know, most people today are on probably at least version six. Most of them might be on version seven. So the answer is yes, there are versions for all of those different uh, revs of, of sales logic. And it does the same thing, works the same way. OK. I had two people answer ask the same question. Um, and I don't know if you are prepared to uh, do a little compare and contrast, but um, wondering how Knowledge Sync and Task Center compare, what the differences might be yeah. um, between the um, they are very similar, and they're both targeted at very similar functionality. What I would say the difference is is uh, that Task Center is actually takes it even further in that it has workflow built into it. So it not only has the email alerting capability and the email responder capability, Task Center also has workflows uh, that are built into it. That's certainly one difference that I'm aware of. Okay. Now I have a couple of requests um, asking to see certain features, and I don't know it, with what you have set up out of the box if this is possible, but I'll just throw it out there. Um, okay. One of them I have is, can we see the action section of the event tab for the activity event? Uh, that is actually a script. So it, it literally is a SQL script or a basic script that's running that does that. I'm not, I'm not a developer, and I'd literally be showing you a big chunk of code. Um, but we can make that available. It's actually available on the Knowledge Sync uh, knowledge base. So if you were to go to the Vineyard Soft website and search their knowledge base, you can actually pull up those queries and take a look at them. OK. And then the other one I had uh, requesting to see something is, can you show new lead, the new lead or contact created through this feature? Uh, maybe that's not, maybe I'm not reading that right. Um, let's see. Yeah, that the question just wants to know if we can, if you can show a new lead or contact created through this feature. I, I don't have that particular uh, event set up on this demo for today, uh, so I can't show you that. But we did create a new ticket here. So here's an example of a, of a brand new ticket that was created. Uh, and we showed you a new activity that was created. Uh, so I, I just don't have my demo set up to show new contacts or leads for this demo. But it would work in relatively the same way. Absolutely. Exactly okay. the same way. Yep. OK. Um, and, oh, and this came in after uh, after the the question before last was asked, and I think you kind of answered this, but just to make sure specifically what mechanism is being used to create an activity in sales logic. Well, Knowledge Sync is running a a query, a SQL script, and it's actually calling on the SLX API. So. It's, uh, if, if there's developers on the line that are familiar with the SalesLogix API, and the API is the application that allows you to create new entities within SalesLogix from directly outside of the client. So the answer is KnowledgeSync is leveraging that API, and it's passing data through that API to create these new entities in SalesLogix. All right. Well, that does it, uh, Scott. We have all the questions answered for the okay. time being. Great. And we'll be posting a recording of this within an hour or so up on our YouTube channel. So uh, if your associates maybe missed it and you'd like them to see it, we'll have this recording up there for you to watch. Scott, one more just snuck in. Um, sure. I don't know if you know the answer to this or not, but is there a way to use the new interface S data with Knowledge Sync? Not at this time, but I've actually heard that Knowledge Sync and some of the newer revisions that are coming out are going to be leveraging S data instead of the API. Uh, so it's another another tool that SalesLogix has made available for developers to push data into SalesLogix and create new entities. 
I don't know all the technical pros and cons of one approach versus the other, other than to say, from what I've seen, S data is easier to work with than the SLX API is. Uh, that's I can't back that up with any facts, but just from what I've seen, it seems like the newest, greatest way to do things. Uh, so the S data portal could and probably is soon going to be used by Knowledge Sync uh, for these types of events. All right, now we're done. <laughs> Um, well, I want to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you for all your questions and your interest. We will be posting this up on our YouTube page, as Scott said, um, and that is youtube.com forward slash customer FX, and we have all of our previous demos up there. We have some uh, developer videos up there as well as um, end user focused videos for different training purposes. So. Besides this demo, there's a lot of other great information out there. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. Thanks, Brianna, and thanks, everyone, for joining us again today. And watch for the next announcement. We're really jazzed about the next one. It's called the webcaster feature. So we hope you can uh, uh, sit in on that one as well. I think it's going to be pretty exciting to see that. So thanks again. All right. Bye.